In this vision that you have, how do you see the role of the internet in the future? Well, probably the greatest miracle of human governance that occurred in the history of our species was not the establishment of constitutional democracy, though that was good. It was not the creation of competitive arenas like markets and democracy and science and courts. That was good. The greatest of all was the deregulation of the internet. It happened in around 1992, three, four. I know the people who wrote the bill under Al Gore. And who would imagine that powerful men and women would take this wonderful tool of power and say, okay, fly. It, 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 it belies all of the cynical assumptions about power, about human nature and power. It was a crystal moment when we did something right. And now, of course, the countries that do not like this have finally adapted. And so in many, uh, in several of the less free countries on Earth, they have adapted to being able to use the current internet um, more, with more agility than the average people can use it against authority. So we must continue to create new agile systems that help us to develop what's coming, which is what, something I call the age of amateurs. Uh, across the 20th century, only one trend was monotonic across the entire century. Fascism came and went, communism came and went, styles and fashions came and went. But the professionalization of all tasks that we used to when we lived on farms, we used to do everything for our family. And it's all been professionalized. This trend started 5,000 years ago in the Fertile Crescent. And it was very important. It was extremely important. And we have gained fantastic benefits. But the number of human beings who can be made into professionals in the West, in the educated countries, is about as large as it's going to get. You're not going to double the number, fraction of people who are professionals very many more times. Just as this trend is ending, a new trend is developing. The age of avocations, the age of amateurs, in which you have your regular job, but that does not satisfy you. You are larger than that. You have an artistic hobby. All of the great scientists I've ever known had artistic hobbies that they performed at a professional level. Artists. But I, but, um, um, Einstein played the violin. I am told that I was taken to watch him at age four. I don't remember. We are capable of creating twice as many skilled people just by the fact that human beings will add avocations to their vocations. And amateurs are already participating in science in many of the wonderful new journalism approaches um, towards advocacy and um, activism that we see on the internet and the web. And this age of amateurs may provide us with the additional intellectual power to solve problems that the professionals cannot solve because the problems are coming too fast. Um, and, and this is something that I portray happening in 30 years in, in my new novel, Existence. In Existence, a, a reporter is on a zeppelin um, that is crossing 
the United States, and the United States has fa started falling apart, but not in all bad ways. Um, so she's visiting these different cultures in America um, on her way to taking on her job. And on her way, she discovers something that might be extremely dangerous on the Zeppelin. So she puts on her augmented reality goggles, taps, clicks her tooth, and announces to her followers on the new, new web, on the new internet, I need a smart mob. And I need experts on this Zeppelin. And I need an experts on chemistry. And the software goes out and alerts volunteers, 10,000 of them across the world. And they coalesce using new software into a composite entity assisted by artificial intelligence. And this composite entity combines their expertise to help her to find out what's going on and to guide her to investigate. She is their hands. She is their eyes. And they investigate more quickly than the government can, more quickly than the Zeppelin company can, more quickly than the professionals can. Now, is this an optimistic view of the future? Of course it is. But it is possible. We already see early versions of this. And if we are optimistic enough to make this happen, because we believe it can happen, then this is a portrait of a world in which citizens and individuals matter as much as corporations, as much as the wealthy, as much as government bureaucrats. And it is the only future that's worth living in because all of the others will fall into dystopia. Now, can a world of empowered individuals go bad too? Oh, yes. We could become terribly judgmental. We could become gossips. And 51% could vote tyranny on the minorities who they disapprove of. But there is reason to believe this won't happen. And the reason is this. So far, every time media has focused on some group that used to be in shadows, only one factor has determined whether the exposure increases our tolerance or decreases our tolerance gays, um, the Ku Klux Klan, okay? Both of them were in shadows. Who has benefited from exposure? Gays. Mm -hmm. Who has always done poorly with exposure? People who hate. The one trait that determines if your secretive group will suffer from light is if you are hateful. Now, I'm not saying that this is all sun and roses, but, but this is a trait that we in the West have. So far, light increases tolerance. It may stop, but so far, it seems to be the way to go. And this is what I talk about in Earth. It is also what I talk about in my nonfiction book, which is called The Transparent Society. Uh -huh.